The following is a conversation between Mike and Sarah. Mike and Sarah deep dives into OpenAI's O1 model, chain of thoughts, reverse curriculum learning, repeated sampling, and discuss AI in general. This podcast was created using Google's Notebook LM. Special thanks to them. And now, let's jump into this amazing conversation. Okay, so you know everybody's talking about AI these days, right? Writing the next best-selling thriller, taking over the world, all that jazz. But today, we're going to skip the hype and dive into something real, something tangible. We're going to figure out how to make AI think, like actually reason and solve problems. That's the real deal, right? We're diving deep into AI reasoning today, going way beyond just spitting out text into actually grasping logic and using it. The research in this field is just exploding, so we've got some really cool papers to unpack with you. Believe me, this isn't just for the tech geniuses out there. Mm -hmm. Ever get that feeling where you know the answer is right there in a pile of data, but you just can't connect the dots? It's the worst. We're going to explore how researchers are giving AI that missing piece, teaching it to reason through complex problems, make connections. Exactly. And it's not even just about making AI smarter. It's about making it actually useful, right? Hey, you ever try explaining something to someone and you just wish you could download your thought process directly to them? Totally. Happens all the time. That's kind of what's happening right now in AI. We're going to break down how AI is being taught to think step by step, almost like we do. It's wild. Using this technique called chain of thought prompting. Yeah, it's a game changer. And that's not even scratching the surface. We're talking models that are like exceeding human IQ score. I know, right? You've seen these complex logic puzzles, even writing code. It's mind blowing. It's a whole new world. We're not just talking about AI spitting out answers anymore. This is AI actually starting to understand how to think. Okay, so let's break this down. Chain of thought. It sounds kind of complicated, hmm. but it's actually pretty intuitive. Imagine you're trying to teach someone a recipe. You wouldn't just hand them the ingredients and be like, good luck. You'd walk them through it. Exactly. You walk them through it step by step. And that's kind of what this thought prompting does for AI. <laughs> Instead of just asking a question, researchers are showing the AI examples of how to solve the problem logically, step by step. It's like giving them that recipe card with clear instructions. It's all about providing context and structure. Think about learning math. Would you rather have someone just be like, here's the formula? Or would you rather understand the logic, like how it actually works? Much rather understand. Chain of thought prompting is like giving AI that aha moment, that deeper understanding. And get this, the research shows it actually works. Hmm. There's this paper by Jason Way and his team. They're over at Google. And they found that by giving an AI model a handful of these chain of thought examples, its performance on solving math problems shot up. Huge difference. Talking outperforming some of the most advanced models out there, like GPT-3. Oh, yeah, GPT-3. And it's not just about crunching numbers, right? We're seeing AI excel at things that you need common sense reasoning for. Right. There's understanding dates, yep. sports, yeah. even figuring out how to give instructions to a robot. So how do you actually see this playing out in the real world? Let's say you ask an AI to solve a classic logic puzzle, right? If John is taller than Mary and Mary is taller than Sarah, who's the shortest? Right. So with traditional AI, it might stumble a little bit, but with chain of thought, you would give it a few examples. You'd break down that logic step by step. Like John is taller than Mary, so Mary is shorter than John. Mary is taller than Sarah, so Sarah is shorter than Mary. Therefore, Sarah is the shortest. So you're basically showing the AI how to think it through, just like you would explain it to a friend or a colleague. Exactly. You show it a few of these examples, it starts to get it. It internalizes that process, and then it can apply that same logical thinking to brand new problems it's never seen before. It's like watching a kid learn how to ride a bike. Yes. Where it's a little shaky at first, but then suddenly it clicks, oh. and they just get it. It clicks. And that's what has researchers so excited. We're not just training these AI models to do specific things. We're teaching them how to think. In a more general way, like a human. Exactly. More human-like. And that's what's really groundbreaking. Your chain of thought prompting, that's just one piece of the puzzle. It is. We got to talk about OpenAI's new model, O1. This has been making headlines, and for good reason. Mm. An AI with an IQ of 120. It's amazing. That's surpassing the average person. It is a remarkable achievement, no question about it. And what's really, I think, even more impressive, it's not just that O1 is good at reasoning. It seems to reason in a way that's eerily similar to how humans think. Wait, really? It's really uncanny. OpenAI, they've been doing these tests where they can actually like 
peek behind the curtain, so to speak, and they can actually see the chain of thought that O1 is using to get to its answers. They're finding that it often mirrors human thought processes in a way we haven't seen before. It's not just about getting the right answer. It's about getting there in a way that makes sense to us. Exactly. It's not just mimicking, it's understanding. And that's what makes O1 so different, so groundbreaking. That's amazing. It's also a little unnerving, if I'm being honest. It is a lot to take in. I get that. But I think what's important to remember, like any tool, it's only as good as the person using it. That's a good point. Its impact depends on how we choose to use it. What are the potential implications here? Both good and maybe, you know, not so good. Sure. Let's start with the positive because there's a lot to be excited about. These AI models have the potential to completely revolutionize so many fields. Like imagine AI working alongside scientists, helping develop new medicines. It'd be like having a super intelligent research assistant. Right available 24 seven. Or think about education. We could have AI tutors that can create a personalized learning plan for every single student. No more one size fits all classrooms. That's a game changer. Totally. And in fields like law or finance, AI could analyze mountains of data, uncover hidden patterns, you know, make those fields more efficient, more accurate. It's really incredible when you think about it. Okay, so speaking of mind blowing, I gotta hear more about how this O1 model is being used in the real world. You mentioned something earlier about medical diagnosis. Researchers are using it to look at those super complex medical images like x-rays and MRIs. Yeah. And it can help doctors find potential problems way faster and more accurately too. So it's not about replacing doctors, it's like, giving them a powerful new tool. Augmenting their expertise. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. We're seeing O1 being used in finance, in law, in education. It's making waves everywhere. It sounds like O1 can do some impressive things. Yeah. Are there any specific examples of how it reasons that really stand out to you? There's this one example that always blows my mind. It involves this coding challenge they gave to O1. And it was a tough one, something that even seasoned programmers often struggle with. They asked it to write this specific type of code called a bash script. It had to rearrange a massive spreadsheet okay. without messing up any of the data. I'll be honest, that went over my head. Can you break that down a bit? Sure. Imagine you have this huge spreadsheet, rows and columns, tons of data, right? Yeah. Now imagine having to perfectly flip that spreadsheet. The rows become columns and the columns become rows. Yeah. But you can't lose a single piece of information. I can see how that would be hard. Super intricate and O1. No way. And it didn't just spit out some clunky solution. The code it wrote was like elegant, efficient. Even the OpenAI engineers were impressed. And when they analyzed the code, they could see the logical steps O1 had taken. It was like watching a master programmer at work. Wow. So it really was thinking like a programmer, not just spitting out something it had memorized. Exactly. It's a whole new level of understanding and problem solving. It's exciting, but it's also a little daunting. Where could this all lead? It's a lot to process, but I think that's why these conversations are so important, right? To think about the implications, the opportunities, and to make sure we're using these advancements responsibly. Now, you mentioned earlier that OpenAI has been very open about showing how O1 works. Why is that transparency so important? And what are they doing to make sure O1 is used for good? That transparency is huge. By letting people peek behind the curtain, they're basically saying, hey, we're all in this together. It's about building trust, making sure this technology is developed responsibly. And they're also taking concrete steps to mitigate any risks. They do tons of safety testing. There's something called red teaming, where they get these experts to try and find weaknesses in the system before it's even released. It's like having a, a team of ethical hackers trying to break the system before it's out in the wild. Exactly. They're trying to make it as safe and secure as possible. And the best part is they're not doing this alone. They're working with governments, organizations around the world. To create ethical guidelines for AI. It sounds like they're trying to get ahead of this. Anticipate problems before they even happen. They are, which I think is a really good sign. Mm. But it's not just on them, right? We all have a role to play in shaping the future of AI. What can the average person do? How can we be a part of this? Stay informed, read about AI, learn how it works, and most importantly, talk about it, have conversations about its implications. The more people who understand AI, the better equipped we'll be to guide its development. We gotta embrace this new technology, but we gotta do it with our eyes wide open. Ask questions, voice your concerns, and demand accountability from the people who are building these systems. Be an active participant when it comes to tech, this powerful. The future of AI is not predetermined. It's something we're all creating together. 
You mentioned earlier that O1 got that incredible IQ score of 120. But how do you measure the IQ of an AI? It's not like they can sit down and take a standardized test. Or can they? That's a great question. It really gets to the heart of what we mean by intelligence. While we can't give an AI a traditional IQ test, we can see how well it performs on tasks that are scientifically proven to be related to human intelligence. Okay, so things like problem solving, pattern recognition. There are these standardized benchmarks that researchers use. One really famous one is the Raven's Progressive Matrices Test. Ever heard of it? It's those puzzles with the missing pieces. You have to figure out the pattern. Yes, exactly. O1 has done exceptionally well on these tests, often scoring higher than the average person. So even though it's not a perfect measurement, it gives us a way to compare AI intelligence to our own. Right. It gives us a framework. But it is important to remember that IQ is just one piece of the puzzle. Humans, we're complex. We have all these different cognitive abilities. AI is still a long way from replicating everything our brains can do. So while O1 might be amazing at logic puzzles, it probably wouldn't be that great at reading someone's emotions or understanding a joke. Exactly. Those are areas where AI still has a lot of catching up to do. Do you think AI will ever truly match or even surpass human intelligence in all its complexity? That's the million dollar question. And it's one that's been debated for decades. Some people think AI will eventually reach this point called the singularity, where it surpasses human intelligence and starts evolving on its own. That's a little intimidating, if I'm being honest. It's a lot to wrap your head around, but others think that AI will always be fundamentally different. It will have its own strengths and weaknesses. More of a complementary relationship, like we each bring something unique to the table. But ultimately, the future of AI is still being written, and it's up to us to ensure it's a future that benefits everyone. I love that. Now, we've talked a lot about the impact of AI reasoning on science, medicine, even education. Mm. But what about the arts? Do you think AI could ever be truly creative, like capable of creating art or music or writing a novel? That's a question that really gets at the core of what it means to be creative. We often think of creativity as something uniquely human, right. something that sets us apart. But now that AI is becoming so advanced, that line is starting to blur a little bit. Totally. We're seeing AI generate some seriously impressive stuff. There are AI systems composing original pieces in different styles, painting these realistic landscapes, even writing short stories. It's pretty mind-blowing. It really is. But it also makes you wonder, is it really creative or is it just really, really good mimicry? It's the big debate, right? Some people think that AI is only capable of creating based on what it's been trained on. It's rearranging existing ideas in new ways. Right, like a super advanced collage artist. But then you have others who argue that AI is capable of coming up with truly original ideas, just like we do. So it might not be about what AI can do, but about how we define creativity. Exactly. As AI gets more sophisticated, we might need to rethink what it means to be creative. It's definitely an interesting time to be alive. What if instead of just teaching AI to think like humans, we also learn to think a bit more like AI. That's a really interesting thought. Right. AI approaches problems in such a different way than we do. Totally. All about logic and data. Super efficiency. Maybe we could learn from that. It'd be like a cognitive upgrade. What if we could be more analytical, more data-driven, even more rational in our decision-making? Imagine the insights we could uncover, the breakthroughs we could have, if we could combine the best of human thinking with the best of AI thinking. It's like... Humans and AI working together, not just as colleagues, but as thought partners, each one making the other stronger. One where AI doesn't just help us solve problems, it helps us become better thinkers ourselves. That's amazing. Well, on that note, I think we'll leave it there for today. A huge thanks to you for joining us for this deep dive into the world of AI reasoning. And to our listeners, we'll catch you next time. It's been a pleasure exploring this with you. All right, buckle up, because today we're diving deep into the world of LLMs, you know, those AI brainiacs behind stuff like ChatGPT, and how researchers are pushing them from simple prompts to some serious next-level reasoning. It's a huge shift, really. We're moving past just throwing a prompt at an LLM and hoping for the best. Right, like it's not just about getting an answer anymore, it's about the process of getting there. Just like we've been giving a student one shot at a tough exam question. Real problem solving just doesn't work like that. And we've got a ton to unpack today. Research papers, news from OpenAI on those new O1 models they just dropped, even a blog post with a pretty out there concept. But let's back up for a sec. What's wrong with the way LLMs have been tackling reasoning so far? Well, traditionally, it's been a one and done situation. Feed the LLM a prompt, it crunches through it, 
and spits out a single answer. Sounds straightforward enough. But complex reasoning takes exploration, refining ideas, going back and forth. You don't solve a tricky math problem by just writing down the first answer that pops into your head. Right? So how do we get these LLMs to slow down, think things through a little more? That's where repeated sampling enters the picture. Instead of just one attempt at an answer, the LLM takes multiple guesses at a problem. So more shots on goal, better chance of scoring, but does that really work? The surprising thing is it does. And often it's not just a small improvement, we're talking massive leaps in performance. There's this paper, Large Language Monkeys, that found this simple trick led to huge improvements across the board. Coding, logic puzzles, you name it. They even had cases where a simpler LLM, just by taking multiple shots, actually outperformed some of the really advanced models that only got one try. Whoa, seriously. Do you have an example that really highlights how well this works? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. They put this to the test on a coding benchmark called SWE Bench Lite. With one attempt, you had a model called DeepSeek with a respectable 15.9% success rate. But with 250 attempts, that success rate shot up to 56%. Wow, okay, that's not just a little boost, that's huge. Exactly. And it's not just about accuracy either. This approach can actually be way more cost effective. Think about it. Sometimes running a cheaper LLM for more attempts is easier on the budget than a single shot with a top of the line model. Now that's what I call a win-win. Finding a great mechanic who does amazing work but doesn't overcharge you, that's the dream. Repeated guessing is clearly a great tool to have. So we've seen how giving LLMs a few extra swings at the ball can really up their game. Less about just getting the right answer and more about how they actually get there. But how do you even begin to teach an AI to show its work like that? It all comes down to this difference between what we call outcome supervision and process supervision. Okay, I'm listening. Break that down for me. Outcome supervision, that's like grading a test based only on the final answer. Doesn't matter how the student got there. Right? right, just as long as they circle the right letter at the end. Exactly. But then you've got process supervision, and that's like giving credit for each step of the problem, even if the final answer isn't 100% there yet. So it's more about understanding their thinking, their reasoning. And ideally, that's what we want with LLMs too. We want to reward them for every correct step in their chain of reasoning. Problem is, that would require someone to manually annotate every single step for every single problem. That would be a lot of work for someone. It would be incredibly time consuming and expensive. And that's where these next few papers come in. This one tackles that whole annotation bottleneck head on with something called reverse curriculum reinforcement learning. Reverse curriculum. Okay, you're gonna have to explain that one. Imagine teaching someone to bake a cake, right? But instead of starting with the ingredients, you start with the frosting and work backward from there. That's a very backward way to bake a cake. It seems counterintuitive, but it actually helps the model learn each step more effectively because it's always working towards a goal it already understands. It's like they already know what the finished cake is supposed to look like, so working backward is less confusing. Exactly. It's a way to get the benefits of process supervision without having to manually annotate every single step. Last paper in the stack here, Aries. What's her angle? Aries takes this whole automation thing to the next level. Instead of humans giving feedback, they use another AI, a teacher, AI, to evaluate and correct the LLM's reasoning at each step. AI teaching AI. That's getting awfully meta, isn't it? It sounds crazy, but it works. They tested on some challenging data sets like Science QA and AOKVQA. And those are? Data sets that test an AI's ability to understand text and images together. Like if you showed it a diagram and asked it a question about it. And the AI teacher actually significantly improved the LLM's reasoning, leading to more accurate answers. Now that's just impressive. So we've gone from repeated guessing to AI tutors in like, what, 15 minutes? It feels like we're getting closer to a point where LLMs can handle some really complex high-level stuff. But big picture for a sec, all this stuff we've been talking about, the repeated sampling, the AI tutors, these O1 models, where do you think it's all headed? The possibilities are mind-blowing when you think about it. Imagine AI assistants that actually get what you're asking, that can reason through complex stuff, not just follow basic commands. So not just set a timer, but actual problem-solving partners. Think about scientific research. AI working alongside scientists, sifting through data, maybe even helping design experiments. So we're talking about AI that could help unlock new discoveries, create life-saving medicines, even help us tackle climate change. And it doesn't stop there. Think about software development. You just tell the AI what you want the program to do, plain and simple. And it writes the code, tests it, debugs it, all without you breaking a sweat. 
Now that would be a game changer. But then there's that blog post, A New Architecture for Enhanced LLM Reasoning. Talked about LLMs working together, like smaller assistant LLMs helping the bigger ones think better. Sounds kind of crazy, doesn't it? It's definitely out there, but that's how innovation happens, right? Thinking differently, a whole team of AI specialists, each with their own strengths, all collaborating on a problem. That's a future I'd be fascinated to see. Like a brain trust of AI all working together. This is a lot to take in. The key takeaway here is simple. LLMs are changing, evolving faster than ever. We're way past simple pattern recognition now. These models are learning to reason. On that note, we've reached the end of our deep dive. We've gone from cutting edge research to mind blowing new techniques, all exploring the incredible potential of LLM reasoning. It's clear that the world of AI is changing faster than ever. So stay curious, keep learning, and we'll catch you next time for another deep dive into the amazing world of AI. Imagine AI that can help you make sense of data help you decide on things, even come up with out-of-the-box solutions that you'd never think of. Okay, so let's jump right in. First up, we've got a paper prompting. Elicits reasoning in large language models. Yep. The idea itself is pretty straightforward. Remember back in school when you had to show your work, like write out every step of a math problem? Oh, definitely. Turns out AI needs that same kind of step-by-step handholding. This paper found that just by giving examples of this chain of thought, reasoning in the prompt, the AI's accuracy on stuff like math word problems went through the roof. It's really cool. It's like we're finally getting the AI to show its work. Yeah. You know, revealing that thought process. Even when the AI got the final answer wrong, its chain of thought often made perfect sense. It's like a window into how these AI models are actually learning, right? And they're starting to grasp the underlying logic, the why behind the what. And the really cool part is that you don't have to retrain the whole AI model to do this. It's like giving it a brand new set of tools. Yeah, so no need to build a specialized AI for each tiny task. And that's great news if you're on a budget. Okay, so now we're moving on. Our next deep dive is a paper that takes a different but equally smart approach. It's all about letting the AI take multiple stabs at the same problem. Which makes sense, right? I mean, how often do you solve a tricky puzzle on the first shot? We all try different things, make mistakes, change our strategy. Yeah. Well, that's exactly the idea behind this paper. Large language monkeys scaling inference compute with repeated sampling. And here's the kicker. They found that even a smaller, less powerful AI model could get crazy good results by having a few tries at the problem. If at first you don't succeed, Try again. It's true for AI too. The pattern they found is super interesting. The more attempts the AI had, the better its chances of getting it right. Mm, this is a predictable relationship between the number of tries and the success rate. There might be some underlying fundamental law about how AI learns and solves problems. Think about this. Instead of spending a ton of money on a single super powerful AI, you could get better results just by running a cheaper one multiple times. Just imagine how much more accessible and affordable AI could become if we can crack that code. Right, it's a whole new way of thinking about building AI. Get ready to go on this one. Okay. Because we're about to enter the world of OpenAI and their latest masterpiece, the O1 model. This thing's making waves with its crazy reasoning skill. It is. OpenAI is keeping some secrets. They're not showing all their cards just yet. Yeah, they're being a little tight-lipped. They've given us this glimpse into the future of AI reasoning, but they're holding back some key ingredients. Keeps things interesting. But here's what we do know. One uses this fascinating new architecture. It's almost like having a smaller AI, a distilled AI, if you will, working as an assistant to the main larger one. Like a little AI sidekick? Exactly. That's cool. It's like having a whole team of experts, each with their own skills working right. together. This reasoning assistant tests different approaches, brings in real world knowledge, guides the main AI to the solution. Here's the best part. This whole reasoning assistant concept, it's not limited to open AI's models. It opens up this whole new world for other researchers to play with to improve reasoning in their own AI. Right, which is huge. It's like they're giving researchers the blueprints to build even more powerful AI, you know. Blueprints that could lead to breakthroughs in scientific discovery, creative problem solving. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And speaking of breakthroughs, let's talk about what OpenAI's O1 can do. They've put out some pretty mind-blowing demos and blog posts. Yeah. Okay. O1 is showing us it can really solve problems. Like, seriously complex stuff. It's the real deal. Like competitive coding, for example. Yeah. This ranked in the 89th percentile on code forces. 
you know, that platform where all the serious programmers hang out. Yeah, yeah. So we're talking about going head to head with some of the best human programmers mm -hmm. and holding its own. It's impressive. And it's not just spitting out code either. O1 gets it, you know, mm. it understands these complex algorithms and strategies. It's like, it's thinking like a programmer. Learning. Exactly. And that's not even the coolest part. Remember those crazy math problems from school? Well, O1 tackled a math Olympiad qualifier and scored in the top 500 students in the entire U.S. Wow. Yeah, the AAE, which is designed to challenge those crazy smart math kids, right? So it's clearly not just crunching numbers. It's reasoning its way through these problems. Yeah. And get this, OpenAI tested O1 on a whole bunch of science problems, physics, biology, chemistry. It's called the GPQA benchmark. Okay. This, it did better than actual PhDs. Yeah. Having a research assistant with multiple doctorates. That's amazing. So to give you a taste of how O1 solves problems, mm -hmm. one of the blog posts breaks down how it tackled this super tricky puzzle. It's called the clock faces problem. You have to spot these tiny patterns in a series of matrices. No, oh, I've seen that one. Right. O1 lays it all out step by step. Recognizing patterns, logical deductions. No. Like watching short. That's a good analogy. It also aced this super hard chemistry question about pH calculations. Like it understands actual chemistry. It's learning. Okay, so now for a dose of reality, O1 isn't perfect. It still messes up sometimes. Right, right. Open AI isn't telling us everything about how it works. You know, they're keeping some secrets. Yeah. There's still a lot we don't know about how it reasons so well. It's this whole new level of AI, but we're just starting to peek under the hood. Exactly. But one thing's for sure, O1 is changing the game. It's blurring the line between crunching numbers and truly understanding. Absolutely. It's incredible to see. It's like we're seeing this whole new kind of intelligence being born, you know, and it could totally change everything. Oh, it already is. We're seeing AI reasoning pop up everywhere. Software development, scientific discovery. Making a difference. Exactly. In software development, it's huge. Imagine having this AI assistant helping you write better code faster. It'd be like having a coding buddy who catches your errors, you know, mm. suggests solutions, maybe even writes whole chunks of code for you. That's what O1 is doing, making code generation better, faster, more accurate. And that frees up human developers to do the creative stuff, the strategic thinking. Like having an AI apprentice to handle the boring parts. Exactly. And this whole human AI team thing, it's not just for coding. In scientific research, AI is analyzing mountains of data, finding patterns, even coming up with hypotheses. Like having a million little research assistants all working at once, seeing things that would take us years to find. One of the OpenAI blog posts has this perfect example. They talk about how O1 solved this really complex chemistry problem, all about pH calculations. And it wasn't just plugging in numbers, it actually understood the chemistry behind it. Like it took a chemistry class and aced the final exam. Mm. I mean, this could be huge for things like drug discovery, new materials, understanding how biology works. Absolutely. And then there's healthcare. Imagine AI that can look at medical images, spot potential problems, help doctors make diagnoses. Having a second opinion from a world expert anytime you need it. Exactly. And the fact that O1 did so well on that GPQA benchmark, the science one, where it beat human PhDs. It's mind-blowing. It means that this AI-assisted diagnosis could be closer than we think. AI is detecting cancer in mammograms, finding signs of eye disease in scans, even predicting heart disease risk from patient data. These AI tools aren't about replacing doctors, they're about giving doctors more information, making things safer, helping them make better decisions. It's about combining the best of both worlds, human intuition and experience with the power of AI. As AI reasoning gets better, we can expect to see changes in fields like education, finance, art, and music. It's a really exciting time to be paying attention to this stuff and the possibilities seem endless. We have to think about the ethics of all this. We can't just make AI smarter. We have to make sure it's being used for good, that it aligns with our values. And that's a conversation we all need to be a part of. AI reasoning is changing fast, and it has the power to reshape our world. But by understanding it, asking the tough questions, and talking about it, we can help steer it in the right direction for everyone. It's going to take all of us working together, thinking ahead, and understanding both the potential and the responsibility that comes with creating something as powerful as AI. Thanks for joining us on this deep dive into the amazing world of AI reasoning. Keep exploring, keep learning, and keep asking those big questions. Until next time.